All right, take your Bible and go with me to Genesis chapter 1, please. Good morning, church. Those of you coming in by camera. Judge everything that you receive every day from now on through the perfection of Jesus Christ. God is perfect, is he not? He's good and perfect. So something coming your way, you need to line it up with Scripture. God, is this you? What am I to do about this? Because the Bible says in all things, through prayer and supplication. So a lot of times we as Christians, we lose our way because we don't pray enough about things. Lord, should I get involved? Should I not get involved? Lord, should I buy this? Should I not buy this? Oh, I don't want to bother the Lord. Please bother him. Because he knows that you are his child and you are stuck in a fallen planet where old split-toe, sawed-off liar is trying to play games with us. Now, we want to give you the word in such a way so you can discern what is of God and what is not of God. Someone say amen. amen. All right. And God wants you to be wise as serpents but gentle as Dove. So good morning to you. Because you have been born again, you are forgiven of all your sin, past, present, and future, and accepted in Christ. No guilt, no condemnation, a child of God. Now we allow the new relationship through Christ to influence us and marinate us. Everyone say, I'm being marinated. The longer I spend in the presence of God, the softer and more pliable I become. Now, the key is, we're so busy, we can't spend a lot of lengths of time with God unless, you know, we, we can make arrangements for it. So that's not the key. The key is not spending lengths of time with God. The key is during the day addressing and talking with God because he's in you, he's around you, you move in him, you talk in him, and you interact with him, and that interaction will cause you at the right times to sit and bury your heart before the Lord. In other words, he begins to direct your steps. Amen? The steps of righteous men and women, which are you because you're born again, are ordered by the Lord. Amen? So, you and I have the distinct privilege of talking and walking with Jesus, just like Adam did in the beginning. Adam and Eve did in the beginning. To come, God, come boldly before the throne of grace, Jesus carrying us there through Christ. Yet it seems that the children of God forgot who they are, who they belong to, how they are designed, and why. So at times when we go through trials, we get this junk food thrown at us. Well, God's trying to work something out in your life. Well, listen. God lives in you, and he's always working in you to do his good will and pleasure. Say amen, Ephesians. So let's carry it on a little bit further. Now, did you get Genesis chapter 1? Don't lose that. We're going to get this in a minute, okay? All right. But we should have the mark of God's presence on us. People should be able to see us beyond our bumper sticker. And know that we belong to God. Say amen. Because God's outshiny, his presence, it's called Shekinah glory. That's an old Hebrew term which means the glory, the immense from the presence of the Lord. You are all filled with God. So our job as a Christian is to get out of the way as we walk with God and let his light project out of us. Say amen. When we were first created, we were light creatures. We were part of God as children, Adam and Eve, before they fell. We were light creatures. We clothed in light. Hello. And then, of course, Satan couldn't have that, so we went right on in and talked them into giving it up. What did the devil say? He's still saying it today. Oh, God didn't really mean what he said. How many times have you heard preaching where it says, no, that's not what it quite really means. And he gives them an alternative. They fell. We know what happened. They fell from being a light being into a sensual being. Everyone say sensual. We are run by our senses. What we sense. See, in the beginning, God walked and talked with Adam. They were innocent. There was no sin. After they had fallen, 
Now they had to go by their conscience. God had to deal with their conscience. Now, how did that work out for them? Not too good. Because in Genesis chapter 8, God had to wipe out the world. So God knew that he had to come down and dwell in man, but he had to come through the door legally. He had to get into the planet right because when Adam gave all over the works of his hands to the devil, the devil sealed God out of this planet. You want to know why the planet is so running so bad? Because men are still listening to the serpent. Why is it you can go through all the ruins, the antique ruins all over the world, and serpents and dragons are on everything? Because the God of this world, still he thinks he's running this world, and the dummies who listen to him are as crazy as he is. It's easy to see who's listening to what just by what they do in their life. Someone say amen. If you're following Jesus, your life should be solid. Amen, because God works every day to get us solid. Can you say amen? He works every day to love us and to care for us. And who would be far from us for us to not receive what God wants to hand out so freely and so liberally to us? Amen. So you got Genesis? Let's read it together. This is the purpose of man. In the beginning, God has never changed his purpose. Man tries to mess up. And, of course, the enemy tries to mess up. But listen to what it says. This is our authority. The truth about authority and power. You have to know what I'm going to teach you today. Otherwise, you won't know about authority and power. You'll be like a big, loud bomb that goes somewhere and has very little effect. I want you to be able to well plant your movements in God so it moves mountains. Didn't Jesus say, if you have faith and mustard seed, you can say to this Mount St. Helens, be thou removed, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Now, folks, what is a mountain? A mountain to a person who's walking or on a donkey is a obstacle that's in the way from point A to point B. There's a mountain there. What Jesus was saying, anything, ooh, listen to Rahata Koma, sorry. Anything that God asks you to do, there isn't a mountain in hell that can stand in the way. If God wants you to be over here, you just simply say, mountain in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my way, which is interpreted to mean any obstacle that Satan puts in your way, whether it be a mountain, whether it be a distraction. You have the authority to command it to move out of your way. We do? Well, who's in you? God. See, you're not walking in your own strength, I hope. We're walking in his strength. And when God says move, what do you think the devil does? And when God says move out of your lips... What do you think the devil does? And then your head says, well, you better check, see if he's gone. Better check, look around the corner. How many ever, I'm a, I'm a monster movie fanatic. Don't tell anybody. I like that monster because God wins and wipes him out. So a- anyway, you might not say, Pastor, how dare you? Well, listen, I know ministers all over the United States, and many of them are monster people. Yeah, I can't tell you who they are. I'd have to kill you. No, I'm sh- <laughs> But one of, my, one of my closest friends, he's probably one of the best Bible teachers that's out there, a real close friend of mine. We spent eight hours talking about monsters, and then he had me take him to a monster movie. <laughs> Remember, he's my guest speaker, so, you know. Listen, all of us, all ministers, we started off as a sheep. <laughs> And somehow we get these pastors, we kind of put them onto some pedals so they walk in like they're Hollywood. Whoa, don't you even get involved with that. Get your eyes off the pastors, get your eyes off of each other, get your eyes back on Jesus. Because the pastors, if they obey God, they're doing what God wants them to do. And if you're obeying God, you're doing what God wants you to do. So our eyes should not be on people. Now, what are the three things God told us not to put our eyes? Now, I'm going to do a series on this, but I want you to listen to me for a second. You know what they are. 
You say, well, Pastor Kerry, how did that come about? Did you just decide to tell us that? <laughs> no. I said, God, and this, I want you to know this. I said, God, I need to have a, a, a word that will cause people to line up with it to help them be a success when they walk with you. I need something like that. I mean, I, I cried out constantly. When I share the word, I don't want my words to fall to the ground. I want them to encourage you and build you up. Amen? I mean, and you, hopefully you're praying for me. And God says, here you go. And remember, he's all wisdom. And he says, tell my people, eyes off the world, because it's passing away. And the one I have for them is much better. Tell my people, eyes off other people. Because everybody wants to give advice or interrupt or do something that's important. And when people are trying to be important, they're always missing it. I'm the only one that's important in this planet to get you out of here. Don't camp here too long. So get your eyes off of people because they're human. Isn't that nice? Matches right up with the scripture. Judge not. Don't look at the fall to your brother. Uh, you know, come on. Beep, 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 beep. Yep. And then the third thing is get your eyes off yourself. What is the thing that Satan harasses everyone so much about? You did this. You poor this. You're never going to amount to this. Blah, 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 blah. You're always going to be in a drug. You're always going to do this. You're always going to. Nobody always going to do anything. But if you keep listening to that mounted mess that enemy keeps throwing into your brain, you're going to be as crazy as him. And we don't want that to happen, and God does not want that to happen. So he gave me that message. Eyes off the world, eyes off of people, eyes off yourself, eyes on Jesus, for he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And you'll say, wow, that's just a simple message, Pastor Kerry. That's so simple. Yeah, try doing it. You won't even be able to figure any of it out without God's help. That's what we have is God. He takes the lead. He takes all of that. And he has you in mind when he does it. Can you say amen? All right, we just begun. So is it too warm in here for anybody? Just fine? If you see big drops of sweat coming off my face and everything like that. All right. It's time to put the fire out in the back. All right. So <laughs> let's read this. Genesis chapter 1. This is where God puts you. And this is where you're going to end up. Listen. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Image and likeness. Nothing else is the image of God and the likeness of God but mankind. According to our likeness. And let them have what? Dominion. See, God wants us to be an under ruler in this planet. He wants us under God to be Ruling in this planet. Listen to what he says. And he says, dominion over the fish of the sea, ha <laughs> ha, fishermen, birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing, including the creep, and the creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said, to them, be fruitful and multiply. And look at the next phrase. The next phrase is, do what? Huh? Fill the earth. Fill it with what? All God people. Fill the earth with God people. The old King James at Texas Receptus says, refill the earth. It was filled at one time, but something happened. And it moved and altered and went into a void of darkness upon the face of the deep. How many know God's perfect? Say, God is perfect. Look at your neighbor and say, God is perfect. He doesn't make anything imperfect. So when you read Genesis 1-1, it says, God created the heavens and the earth. There's a period there. And then it says, the earth was without form and void. Something happened. Just leave it at that. God does not make things chaotic. God does not start with, the, with little things and make them into better things. God starts off perfect. Can you say amen? All right. 
So something did happen. Think about it. Maybe it'll cause you to get into the Word and study. I mean, it's really good. And then if you have any questions, man, I tell you what, I love... The thing I like to talk about is the Bible, but I talk about everything, fishing, hunting, this kind of stuff. But I like to talk about the Word because that's how we get revelation. When people talk about the Word and what's God saying, what's God doing, we get revelation knowledge. Can you say amen? All right, what did God give you? He revealed something to you, and that was something. Amen. You can read a scripture and hear a scripture and read a scripture and go, wow, that's really good, Pastor Kerry. That's, that's special. That's, that's wonderful. And all of a sudden, the scripture just goes boom and, and explodes. Well, she has, is believing for breathing to be healed, her breathing to be healed. And yet we teach that God came at Pentecost and filled the atmosphere as the water covered the sea, Right? And as the water covers the seas, so when Pentecost came, the Holy Spirit came into the atmosphere like never before. Folks, you're breathing God. Now, the difference between a person who has not God in their heart to a person who is ignorant about God being in their heart to the person who understands who they are in Christ and has God in their heart. It's all different. You see, if you're unaware God's all around you, then how can you respond to him unless someone preach and share Jesus with you? And if you know God's all around you and you're a Christian, but you don't know much word because you never read your Bible, you, you won't know that if you breathe in, you're breathing in God. And when you exhale, you're exhaling God. Why? Because in him we live and we move and we have our being. But see, what happens is we peripherally look at the word and we go, yeah, yeah, that's good. And there's nothing wrong with that. But one day you're just peripherally, oh, and you're just reading a fame, you know, a familiar scripture too, and it blows up and it comes alive. And you go, wow, that's when you experience the promise. See, the moment God, she saw what God did, she started getting healed. The moment you see God healed you 2,000 years ago, and you're not trying to get healed, but you're trying to back the enemy off so the healing is yours. And you learn it to do it God's way. It works quicker and faster. And it's not so much a mystery. Someone say amen. Listen. So God created man in his own image after his own likeness. And God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Subdue it. Subdue it against what? Satan. Satan was already a fallen, evil creature in the earth when God put Adam and Eve here. And he said, subdue it. Don't let him out of your sight. Keep him under your feet. Keep the devil under defeat. De-left one and de-right one. Amen? Look under there. See if his face is there. Hello. Are you still with me? Then he says... And over all living things that move on the earth. So God's design is for us to be in authority. Everyone say authority. But think about it. How Satan is messed with all that. Okay. So let's give up a couple points. Number one. The plan for man was to rule this planet under God. Out of love. And to populate it and keep it. To dress it. To guard it. God gave it to man. Second is, so when Adam fell, all that God gave to Adam, to him, was placed in the serpent's hand. And the earth brought forth a curse. We're going to read this in here in a minute, okay? Adam's nature now was evil. Satan had entered his flesh and blood. That's why our flesh and blood can't go into heaven. It has to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. You got that part. Okay, are you with me? So, Adam's nature now was evil. And the serpent's poison, his DNA, was running through his blood and flesh. We're going to see something here in a minute. Maybe you've never saw. That's why flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Here are two revealing scriptures I'm going to give to you. The first one is Genesis 3, 17 through 19. And the second is Luke 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, you with me? Should be up there for you. All right, Genesis 3 says, Adam's nature was now evil. 
And the earth was made and designed to respond to God's nature, not Satan's nature in man. So then to Adam, God said, because you have heeded to the voice of your wife, must have been henpecked, and haven't eaten from, sorry, good, you guys got that, ah, ha, ha, amen. Remind me afterwards when we're having breakfast together, if you can stay, I'll show you the, the two doors in heaven, okay? All right, so let's go on, okay. And, have you, and then God says, look, because you have heeded to your voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of. I'm going to tell you, God did not put that tree in the garden like that. He put a perfect tree in the garden. Satan messed with its DNA, knowing that if he could talk into man into eating from it, man's DNA, his flesh and his blood would change. Called sin. Hello? So what did God say? Oh, go over there and, and just look at the tree. No, he says, don't even get near the tree. Hello? Adam added to it. God says, don't eat it because it will kill you. The moment you eat it, you're going to die. And not only that, but Eve, when she was responding to the lies of the enemy, she says, neither shall we touch it. Women, men, we're a sensual being. Touch is something. You know, so she's, I don't want to touch it. Hello, are you with me? Thirdly, so let's listen to this. All right. And then, so the moment you shall eat of it, the cursed be, now listen, cursed be the ground for your sake. God did not say, I curse the ground, Adam, because you are now a sinner. That's what we read in it. No. Because Satan's nature was in mankind, the ground would not recognize God because God is no longer dwelling in man, but the evil one is. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, which of you being evil could give good gifts to your son? He was talking to his disciples. Call them evil. They weren't born again yet. They had the serpent's nature. You still have the serpent's nature in your flesh. That's why you got wrinkles. That's why hair missing. Hello? And one day we're going to shed this cocoon. Can you say amen? But when we present it to God and we do it right, this will not get in the way as much. And you'll find your day be filled with joy and peace. How many of you love that kind of stuff? That's what God has for you. But don't run by the fallen one. So, are you with me? So he says, and it will bring forth instead of fruit... Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. And you shall eat of the herb of the field. And in sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you are turned to the ground. For out of it you were taken. And dust you are. And to dust you will return. Now do you know why Jesus in the garden sweat great drops of blood? Let me tell you. This is a good little one take home. He did that for Adam's agonizing, stressful labor in the earth. He sweat agony and drops of blood to relieve the stress and, and the, the sinful mental stress in our mind. Can you say amen? And when, when you walk with Jesus, he takes all that care off of us. If you give it to him. Are you with me? Listen to this next scripture. Just so you know. Remember now, Satan has control of the planet back then. Listen. Luke 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then the devil, taking Jesus up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. Who delivered all that to, to, to the devil? Come on, folks. Adam did. So he's tempting Jesus with the kingdoms that Adam gave him. So if you're doubting the fact that he didn't have those kingdoms, he did. And folks, some of the people in the world right now, their leaders are sworn to the serpent. They might not know it. But that's why their countries are so bad. Look at Haiti. I'm a missionary from Haiti. I've been there a lot of times taking teams down into Haiti. 
They dedicated that nation to the devil. They have children's sacrifices in it. And you want to know why everything in the world's going wrong with that nation? Because they brought a curse on themselves by embracing Satan. What do we do? There's Christians down there. Well, a lot of the Christians in Haiti are in what everybody else is in. Disarray and fighting amongst themselves. Remember Satan's greatest trick is get you to put somebody in a category and then analyze them and then put somebody else in a different category so neither one, so the white are over here, the black are over here, the brown are over here, bless God and the purple, we're over here. You see? Keeps everything segmented, compartmentalized so that we're all suspicious to everything. But what did Jesus say? Jesus says, come unto me and let's unify. I don't know Jew, Greek. I don't know bond, free. I don't know any more male, female. We know no man after the flesh. We don't know black and white. We know children of God. Can you say amen? Same kind of blood. Moving right along. All these things, I mean, if you bow down to me, didn't Satan say that to him? What's Satan trying to do? He's trying to get everybody to bow to him. So he can't get you to bow, so what does he do? He gets you to miss church. He gets you to be distracted. You got this, you got that, you got this, and you got that. So if he can't keep you, you know, from relating to God, he'll keep you away from learning about him. Well, I can learn about God wherever I am. Sure you can. Uh -huh. I've met no scholars that learn by themselves. In fact, I'm going to say this to you. The quicker you get to understand what I'm going to say, the quicker you'll grow. You never come up with anything on your own. Listen to me. You never come up with anything on your own. It's always influenced We've been designed to follow, not designed to lead. What do you mean? God wants us to lead, yes, but not until we can be under somebody. See, I'm a good leader because I'm under God, and I don't want to get out of that. You're a good person because you're under God's authority. Say amen. You've surrendered to God. You see, before you got saved, you were an enemy of God. And it says, agree with your adversary while you're on the way with him. Let's see, turn you over to the officer. Our officer turns you over to the judge, and you don't come out till you paid all your debt. Well, our debt was so great, Jesus paid it for us. Instead, agree with your adversary, God, while you're walking your life. Why? Because then God will pardon your sins, and he will walk with you and cause you to prosper. What's the father's attitude when he sees us been so far away and we've made such a mess out of our life? When he sees us afar off, he runs to us. How about you? Do you run to God? Amen. So we know that we were made for authority. Can you say amen? Go with me to Colossians chapter 2. And let's see why we have that authority right now. Colossians chapter 2, 11 through 17. Jesus, the last Adam, he finished the work the first Adam was supposed to do. Remember, he was supposed to subdue the earth. But right now, in God in you, we're supposed to subdue. We're supposed to occupy until he comes. Amen? So, you serve God, you love God, and he subdues your family. Suddenly, kids that were way out there somewhere are now coming and hearing about God. Listen, people come to church broken. That's why we don't judge. Come, 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 broken one. So God can heal you. But if you never come because you think God wants perfection, you've missed and you embrace the lie. God wants you, not your perfection. God wants you. He wants to help you love you, make you into something that you feel well and good about, can you say amen? But you're not going to do it on your own. You're not going to come up with the idea on your own. 
You're going to have to get with God and get the wisdom from above. Can you say amen? All right, so let's go on. So Colossians 2 verse 11 says, In him, where are we? In him you were also circumcised. I'll explain in a minute. With the circumcision made without hands. By the putting off of the body. Do you see what I mean? Romans 12, what do we do with our flesh? We lay it on the altar. We put off our body. Don't carry it around with you. Put it off. Can you say amen? When it says, have another, you say, no, I'm putting you off, buddy. Remember, your flesh is different you than the you you. People don't realize that your flesh is not going. It's a different you. It's the old nasty you. Lay it on the altar and get rid of that bag of bones. Can you say amen? Come on, laugh with me a little bit. So in him we were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in our heart. By the putting off of our body of the flesh, which keeps us out of church. By the circumcision of Christ, by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. Buried with him in baptism. Remember I taught you about that? That once we accept Christ, we're actually submerged into God and surrounded and silhouetted by him. In which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Verse 13, and you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, together with him. So you can't go anywhere without him. You think you can, but you don't. You go with him. Say amen. Having forgiven you all trespasses, so the enemy can't play with your head, having wiped out the handwriting and the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he had taken out of the way. Folks, when mankind, Adam, fell, we were sentenced to death. Because the nature of Satan was in us, we were sentenced to hell. But God didn't want to lose his children. So he began to try to rescue us. And as he began, everything that he was doing, he was working with man. And man is always full of flaws. So every time God had a neat plan for man, we mess it up. Every time God worked with man, man messed it up. Look at Samson. Woo, mighty man of God. All of a sudden, Delilah brought him to his knees. There's a lot of ministers out there that have been visited by Delilah's and have been brought to their knees. Let me say this to the body of Christ. There's a lot of wonderful ministers that are broken and afraid to come back and be repaired because they either been hurt or they did something terrible. They feel that, that you know, everybody condemned them for. I want to let you know, Jesus is in the fixing business. He doesn't fix you once and then say, well, the next time I'm going to let you go. How many times did Peter come to him? Did I forgive my brother? How many times? Seven times? Jesus was describing what he would do when it comes to us. How many times in a day when you had a real bad day did you need to be forgiven? Right? And so remember that relationship. God's not interested in your mistakes. He's interested in you. And he knows your mistakes are going to be that way. That's why he came. But because of the mess that Satan's flicking around in our heads, we're thinking, I made a mistake, so I better go like Adam and hide myself from God. What, are you going to stay away from the hospital? Because you're sick? <laughs> real fun. That's a real amazing thing. Yep, we're going to follow you. <laughs> Moving right along. Are you with me? So God re-straightened it up through Je Jesus' death and resurrection and turned the victory over to us. What does the Bible say? Neither death, nor life, nor present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. All these things we are more than conquerors. I always like to share it this way. Back when I was working a secular job, I worked a week and I got a paycheck. I conquered that week, right? And then what do I do? I take the paycheck, I turn it over to my wife. She becomes more than a conqueror. 
the idea what I'm saying to you is, Jesus did all the work. And on the cross, before he went to hell and dealt with the devil, he said, it is finished. By faith, Jesus said, it is finished. Everything that the devil could accuse you of has been wiped out. And when the devil, now listen, listen to this. When the devil starts accusing you, don't entertain his lies. Just remind him, I'm sanctified in Christ. I'm God's business. You have no say in my life. When you learn to start talking to the enemy in the name of Jesus like that, he'll back off. Little by little, he'll start backing off you. Say, I don't need to harass that carry guy. Just, just, he's just too much for me to handle. I'll go over and harass his wife. Or I'll go and do his kids. I mean, man, these are spirits. And their job is to make your life miserable. So you beat them at their own game with the tools God gives us. Don't be religious with them. I went to church, so now I feel cleansed. What about the rest of the week when the devil's pounding on you? You need to know how to use the weapons of your warfare. You need to know how to be mighty in God. You need to know how to submit to God so that when you do use his power, his power is not hindered. His power is released to do miracles. That's who we are. But you see, unless we submit to God, we cannot use God's power. If you don't plug in, toaster don't work, even though it's a beautiful toaster. Hey, toasters, you don't stay plugged in and let God continue to flow through you, continue to work with you, and continue to charge you up, staying submitted to God. Now, the word submit has always got a bad rap. I'm submitted. No, what it means is you're willing to do whatever God tells you because you know God is good. And God is perfect. And if he says to do something, you're going to have the authority to get her done. Amen. God, when he asks you to do something, he fully expects you not only to obey him, but to realize that he's going to be in you doing the work. It's not going to be you. It's going to be God in you doing the work. So God just tells you, hey, I want you to be this, or I want you to do this. Don't go with your head and say, oh, how am I going to do that? You're not. You're going to go with God and get the instructions on what to do. You got a problem at work, some, some squirrely people, you go to God and you get some instruction on how to deal with them. Amen. We've been given authority in Christ. Say amen. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. John 1, verse 12 and 13. Almost done with you. But as many as received him, to them he gave the authority or the power, the right, to become children of God. Say, I have a right as a child of God. Now, not a self-right, but a God right. Can you say amen? All right, that's the difference. All right. Then it goes on. And who... Who were not born of corruptible seed, nor of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but you were born of God. Say, I'm born of God. God lives in me. And if I would quiet down, I'd hear him better. Sometimes we have to, okay? Now, we're sons of light. That means everywhere we go, we should see. Amen? Amen? What do you use a flashlight for? <laughs> How many here were just thankful that mom packed a flashlight when you were camping and you had to head for that outhouse? Let there be light. <laughs> That's exactly who you carry. You carry an illuminating light inside of you. And when you know how to release him, he will light your steps in the future. He will tell you not to be fearful even though you see something that, that could normally threaten you. He'll tell you not to be fearful. Why? The Lord is my shepherd. He's going to lay me down near wolves and jackals. You see, while you're, here's the deal. While you're walking with Jesus, is Jesus going to let the devil lie to your head? Why do we think that? Why do we think that when we go into our prayer closet... The devil follows us in and listens into what we're praying. 
Why do we think that? Because you're thinking what the enemy suggested. God has so well covered you, but it's the little lies and foxes that he throws into your brain that keeps us guessing if God really is for us. So moving right quick to this. We're sons of light. Listen to this. John 1, 13, 12 and 13 says, But as any, many as received him, they became sons of God, full of light. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. You are all sons of light, sons of the day. You're not of the night nor of the darkness. 1 John 1, 5 and 7 says, This is the message that we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You are creatures of light again. So don't let your mind entertain dark thoughts. And then verse 7 says, But if as we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, continually cleanses of all of our goofs and mistakes and sins. So if we walk with God every day, he's cleansing us throughout the day. Hello. He's, he's working with your heart. To say, oh, don't do that, don't say that, you know, better or not, mm -hmm. you know, come on. How, how many ever caught yourself when you used to just pop off with something you held back because you felt it was a wiser thing to do? You see, he's working with you. Amen. When we receive Christ, God accepts us totally and works with us that way. It's our head that has those lies in it we got to wash clean. All right. A man under the authority, I guess I'm just going to relate this to you because we're right on our number here. Let me come down. Can I come down where you are? All right. Remember the centurion in the book? I think it's Matthew chapter 8, where it says there was a centurion, a soldier, a leader, a soldier, a captain. His servant was lied home. And his servant was very valuable. And the servant was at home sick. And he heard of Jesus. Remember last week when we talked about hearing about Jesus? And so he sent some servants and envoys out. He says, would you come and, and pray for my servant that he be healed? And Jesus says, I will immediately. And then as he came, one translation says that the centurion met him. And he says, Jesus, look, I'm unworthy to, come to have you come to my house. But speak the word only and he will be healed. And then he says, for I am a man under authority and I say to this one do this and to this one do that and they do that I'm also being told what to do because I'm under that authority this is the key to power if you're a Christian and you're smarting up and you're talking bad about people in authority other churches you won't have any power if you're talking bad about your government, even though some of you, Ooh, you know what I mean, you're stepping into a wrong area of draining power. The Bible says he doesn't want, God doesn't want us antagonistic. Yes, we're affected by what people do and not do because we're under a government. Can you say amen? But our Bible says to pray for those in authority. Bring God in on their behalf because they don't know how to pray themselves. We're the authority. But we have to submit to God. And how can we submit to God who puts everybody in the position that they're in, whether they're good or these other people get in, whether they're bad? If we're railing on what the devil's doing all the time, we haven't got time to listen to God. But the Bible says if we will submit to God, then his power is unhindered to flow through us. Hello. And Jesus said, I marvel. I've not seen so great a faith in Israel. This man says, do this, and it does it. Jesus knew that the man understood, the centurion understood, that Jesus came to his father's authority all the time with, come not to do my own will, the will of him sent me. Okay. And he submitted to his father, and because he did, what he did was miracles. When you and I learn to submit with God by first meeting with him and getting used to how he is, you watch, miracles will start happening almost by accidents in your life. Little things. Psalms 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. I want to say to you, 
I don't want our church to become political. Okay? Listen, I know where you stand, most of you, but we have people coming that don't stand there. Rather than divide us up on who's right and who's wrong, let's preach Christ and let's get God to influence their thoughts and not get into arguments whether we should wear a mask or not, whether we should do this or do that. That's Satan's game. And that, that makes our eyes off God and on to what? People and the world. Wrong, wrong grace. Okay, so look what it says. Trust in the Lord, rather, and do good. Dwell in the land. Amen. And feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Next, commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Let me just tell you, you're a Christian. You're a son of God. God does not take lightly the enemy trying to pick on you. But what I want to encourage you as a pastor and a friend Get closer to God. The, I mean, it could happen at any moment we could get out of here. So don't, don't even play games. Don't be sticking a needle in your arm or don't be doing all kinds of stuff because when we're gone, you're going to be still here. And then you're going to go through seven tribula years of tribulation hell. Okay? And you think people are trying to force you to take a vaccine or not? It's against our constitution, people forcing you to do anything. Your freedom is your freedom. Keep it, okay? Don't let, let the devil, what's the devil trying to do? He's trying to take away our way from our freedoms. Not tell us we're not saved, all this kind of stuff, right? All right. So did you get something out of that this morning? All right, let's give praise to God. Now, it doesn't do any good to just hear a good sermon. and.